In this class, we are going to learn how we can send an email message with the help of Graph API by Microsoft. I am here in the official documentation page by Microsoft on using Microsoft Graph REST APIs. From the table of content, we need to go to messages which is under mail. So there is a topic called a send mail. If you click on this, you will get a documentation on how to use send mail API in Microsoft Graph. Here Microsoft has documented at high level what we can achieve with the help of send mail. As the name suggests, with the help of this Graph API, we can send a message with a specified request body either in a JSON or MIME format. In the hands-on in this class, we are going to consider the JSON example, but if you are going for MIME, that also you can use. There is an example provided by Microsoft at the end of this page, I will show you shortly. So when to use MIME, when to use JSON, it solely depends on the business requirement and the programming language, whatever you are making use of. I am going to demonstrate with the help of Postman. If you are able to send a mail with Postman, then you can replicate this in any of the products or any of the programming languages. If I scroll down, the most important thing while using Microsoft Graph REST API is the permission. You need to add mail.send permission, be it a delegated or application permissions to your Azure app. We had seen in detail how we can register our application in portal.azure.com. Also, we had seen how to get a secret and the secret value. Also, we had seen how we can add those permissions to the app which we register in portal.azure.com. If you have not watched those classes, please check out those classes before moving ahead with this class. If I scroll down, Microsoft has provided couple of URLs over here. We can make use of any based on our requirement. So I'm going to make use of this first one where I'm going to get the authorization with the signed in user for the mailbox. And then I'm going to make use of this URL and going to send an email. So HTTP method over here is post authorization. Obviously, this is making use of or 2.0 authentication. We had seen earlier in detail about this content type in Postman. It will automatically take. But if you are going for a programming language, just make sure you just overwrite the content type with application slash JSON or test slash plane for the MIME content. In the request body, we need to send the message and where it has to save, whether to save the message in a sent item or not. And in the response, if the API successfully sends the message, then we will get a status to not to. We will see shortly how it looks. Now we will demonstrate those example with the Postman client. So without wasting much time, let's begin with the hands on. I'm here in the Postman client. I have copy pasted the URL which Microsoft has provided over here and the HTTP method I have selected over here is the post. Same thing you have to select. Let me go back to this documentation. I have to copy exactly similar thing whatever is provided over here by Microsoft. Switch back and provide over here. If you want you can beautify by clicking on beautify on Postman. Coming to authorization, just make sure as I told, we need to add those permission mail.send. Then you have to click on this get new access token, attach the token over here and click on send. Let me switch over to body. I'm clicking on send. We have to get 202 accepted over here. Yeah, I'm getting 202 accepted over here, which means it has successfully sent the email notification or the email message. Let me switch over to my mailbox and see. Let me switch over to this sent items. Now in the sent item, it is not showing whether it has sent the mail or not. Let me go back to this Postman client. Now instead of the generic email address, let me modify the email address over here and provide my Gmail email address bnum.apps at the rate gmail.com. Coming to CC also, I will copy and paste the same thing over here. And now I will click on send item. It is not saving in this sent items because the reason is we have marked here save to sent item as false. Also, we will mark this as true. If it mark it as false, it won't save the message over here after sending the email successfully. If we set this to true, then only it will save the message. Now I will click on send again. This time it has to save the email in the sent items folder. Let me switch over to this mailbox. Now here if you see, we are getting the mail over here in the sent items. So it has sent to benum.apps at the rate gmail.com to and cc which we, were, we have modified. Now the subject and body, it will be exactly similar to what we have added over here the new cafeteria is open and meet for lunch so in example 2 microsoft has demonstrated how we can send the custom internet message headers and then send the email so these headers will be used in order to uniquely identify your message suppose if you are creating a bot or a application which will uniquely read your message only if it satisfy particular custom header then we can make use of this custom message headers now let me copy this from here 
Suppose any of you know exactly why these custom headers are used in business or in a real life scenario. Please let everyone know by commenting in the comment section. Now let me copy everything and paste it over here. Just delete everything and paste. Click on beautify and click on send. Now we have entered all the details along with a header over here. This is the custom header. Now if you want to verify this, you can just make use of this list messages graph API which we had seen in our earlier classes. When we retrieve the message, we will get this message headers as well in the response. Now I will switch back to this documentation. If I scroll down, there is a third example provided. Suppose you might get a doubt like if we want to send the attachments like here. In this case, we didn't add any attachments over here. If we want to add attachments, how we can achieve this? If you get the doubt, then here is the example for you. The only difference is we need to add this section that is attachment. We need to provide the base 64 content over here and the content type will be test slash plain and the old data type will be file attachment this we had seen in detail how we can construct the attachment section in our previous class that is when we demonstrated create a draft message now i will copy everything from here we don't have to change the url just the message will vary now i will copy everything over here only difference will be over here the attachment instead of custom message headers we will be adding over here attachments now I will remove this email address and give our gmail address at gmail.com and click on send. Done. Let me go back to my mailbox here. If I click on this, I am getting the attachment over here. Just click on this and verify it is having hello world. So like this we can attach n number of items over here as you can see this is the array we can attach the pdf we can attach excel file we can attach n number of stuffs over here with the help of attachments and also this will support n number of attachments to be added while sending a message so like this we had seen in detail how we can send a simple message we had seen how we can send a message with custom internet headers and then we had seen how we can attach the attachments file attachments and send the email message at the end there is a section wherein if you want to send a MIME format then just make sure you just overwrite the content type over here in the headers to test slash plane that is over here currently it is application slash json then you can go to body you can just make this as text then you can copy and paste your content you can copy exactly what is over here and test so in actual use case you will have the MIME format which will be generated programmatically in your code so like this we can make use of this send mail graph api by microsoft and send the emails programmatically from our outlook mailbox